So people are asking me, what is a metaverse? We're investing heavily into this next level, serious convergence of the new World Wide Web and technology. So everyone's asking me to explain what exactly the metaverse is, and it's kind of complicated. But before we dig into the details, here are some potential wins when this meta thing finally becomes mainstream in like, what, five, 10 years from now, sooner than you think. Imagine, if you will, things like this virtual school with virtual teachers who actually adapt to your personal learning style one-to-one. -one. Graphically dimensional lessons that show real world examples of math and science rather than just words and pictures on a page in a textbook. Or practicing flying or repairing a fighter jet in real time. Learning how to be an electrician without being shocked. Virtually removing an appendix without killing a patient. Holographic Zoom calls featuring real faces, not those ugly virtual cartoon people, right? How about holographic digital customer service representatives, technicians, medical professionals who won't take days off and won't give you attitude and they'll quickly solve your problems. That's an improvement, right? Automated diagnostics of automobiles, appliances, and you. There's already talk of something called twinning, which is actually creating a virtual sandbox of you using your existing DNA, which is kind of scary and kind of cool at the same time. How about realistic three-dimensional performances, concerts, conventions, conferences, where you'll actually believe and feel like you're actually there. How about virtual card games or table games or other numbers games at your bookies, uh, I mean, your friend's house. How about holographic menus at restaurants or the ability to virtually tour exotic places that you can't physically get to at your own pace? You don't have to rush through with a group tour. Or maybe you can shop and look around in a store and try things on without actually being there. How about gaming with artificially intelligent characters who respond to your actions resulting in a different result, maybe a random result every time you play the game? It's actually never the same game twice. I'm actually working on this with someone. Never mind. Um, the ability to cast your favorite virtual actors or performers along with you beside them in a genre and a location that you choose in a unique three-dimensional movie that you initiate and AI completes. You make your own movie and you star beside your favorite actor. It could happen. And then there's the weird stuff like Coca-Cola launching a flavor born in the metaverse along a Fortnite game or something, which is just weird. And who knows what can happen, right? The potential is really endless, and that's the point. So the metaverse really is the next phase of technology where new hardware and software come together in this convergence to create virtual things that look real and uh, could be kind of magical. However, with the metaverse pegged to become a multi-trillion dollar, that's a T, by 2030, with tech giants like Meta, which used to be Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Google, everybody else investing big money and making it a reality, it's really time to figure out what this vague and complex term metaverse really means. So the term metaverse was actually created by an author called Neil Stevenson in his 1992 sci-fi novel called Snow Crash. Not a big deal, but we're talking, the story talks about a post-global economic collapse with organized crime, uh, mercenary armies, and the like. It, not too much different than 2022 when you really think about it. Now, Stevenson refers to the metaverse as an all-encompassing digital world that exists parallel to the real world, and you can kind of pop back and forth between the two. Wait, kind of like the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Anyway, think about it like this. The first internet was all text. It was a military thing. The other were games and even porn, but you had to use your imagination to really flesh it out, right? Then it became photographic. And once the speeds increased, we began to see streaming audio and video, which is kind of where we're at now. And today we're beginning to see some augmented reality where you can change your face to a talking avatar or something weird kind of like, wait, let me show you, let me show you something like this, right? A talking monkey or something like this. You could do that and it looks... It looks pretty darn real. Well, it really doesn't, but you know what I'm talking about. You can have your eyes pop out of your skull and put big ears on yourself. You can really do just make, make yourself cry. Whatever you want to do through the power of software in your existing technology that we have today. And it's kind of cool. Wait, I'm not crying anymore, but I'll leave my eyes on. They're a little disturbing. They actually pop out. I don't know when, but all right. So let's continue on this road, on this journey here. So it, look, they're actually cartoonish and fake, as you've just seen. The next gen, what's being called the metaverse, is trying to look and act a little or a lot more real. 
Look, although visionary leaders like Mark Zuckerberg and Satya Nutella talk about bringing the metaverse to reality with these goofy VR glasses that nobody wants to wear, it's already started. Think your socially interactive video games like Minecraft or Fortnite, or communities of strangers interacting with each other from all over the world, creating their own worlds and even their own e economies. So the metaverse, it's honestly difficult to flesh out what the metaverse will become, because we really don't know yet. It's still too new. And with the proliferation of artificial intelligence, which actually may begin to think and create in ways our organic brains can't yet imagine, no one's really sure what it's going to become. I'm sure no one guessed in the 90s that a large percentage of today's kids will be brainwashed by an imported Chinese video app. You know what I'm talking about. Facebook, with its billions of users and now facing market maturity, is banking on the metaverse as its next big thing. From what Zuckerberg's preaching, it seems their vision is billions of happy little avatars with digital designer wardrobes. Yes, people are already buying digital sneakers at a cost that's often higher than real sneakers. I can't figure that out, but people are doing it. So it's a lot of hype and it's a lot of promises at this point, but Facebook and Meta, whatever they're called now, has a ton of money and money drive business trends. That's what's going to happen. So after Facebook does its thing and then everybody else jumps on, what's it going to become? Well, it's all about reality or how you perceive reality. Here's the three types of reality we're talking about right now. And there could be more down the line. Augmented reality or AR, where we add things to real things like text or masks or backgrounds we change things that are obviously existing but make them a little bit different how about virtual reality where we actually play in a sandbox using an avatar we create an avatar that kind of looks like ourselves but doesn't really and we put that somewhere and they can do things we can't do in the real world and then there's mixed reality and extended reality which is the next phase which is a little real and a little not so actually create a you and put it in a virtual world and you can do all kinds of weird things which you actually look like yourself, I guess. Hard to say. Now, the metaverse doesn't necessarily require that its spaces be accessed via virtual reality or augmented reality. Virtual worlds, including games like Fortnite, already exist. And they can be accessed through your phone or uh, video game consoles or even your computer. But uh, these things have already started calling themselves the metaverse. This is kind of the first phase of it, I guess, if you will. A potentially even bigger piece of the meta pie has already shown signs of de developing a, a new digital economy where users can create, buy, and sell goods. There's in-game currencies, which have been around for a while, and you've probably heard of digital currency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, which can be used in the real world to buy things. And now there's NFTs, these non-fungible tokens, which is basically fake stuff that allows real people to buy digital art and even fake real estate in some digital environment, mostly for bragging rights, because there's really not a whole lot you can do with it at this point, but people are saying buy it now, you won't be able to get it later, but if you can create endless worlds, virtual worlds, then it's really not limited. So it's kind of like, you know, status symbol, so to speak. You might want to hold up on that. So it's not just the gaming companies ushering in this metaverse. Uh, the tech giants, as we talked about, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, Intel, and even Snap are working on building tech related to uh interacting with virtual worlds there's a bunch of smaller companies too that are building the more fringe aspects to create or augment virtual worlds uh, meta seems to be bent on creating virtual hangouts for people to have parties and microsoft's doing kind of something similar but more along with tech meetings and business environments now you've probably seen those weird vr headsets those ugly things i gave mine the goodwill i couldn't deal with it they're still big and ugly and i don't think they're going to catch on personally i could be wrong some people actually experience motion sickness or pain with these goggles and they have glasses now right augmented reality glasses made by google facebook snap i think even amazon had them but they still look kind of weird and people who wear them they kind of look dorky i mean you have to admit and there's still the bigger problem the connectivity issue that's not yet resolved. How will we connect billions of people all around the planet with realistic looking augmented video or holograms in real time across the whole world? We haven't figured that out yet. We can't even get internet to some parts of the world. Can't even get internet to some parts of America yet. And yes, holograms are a big deal. They are probably the next big thing. That's my prediction, but today they still stink. They exist, but they're kind of in their infancy. I'm not gonna lie. There's some really cool ones, and some even made with fans with a friend of mine, Mark Paris, is engineering right now in Las Vegas, but they still require some heavy tech for processing. You need projectors and a ton of power that you can't carry around easily. You need some big back battery backpacks, especially 
outdoors to make them look bright or in well-lit rooms. It, it's still got a ways to go, and they simply don't look super real yet. What about the digital avatars you probably saw in the news that Meta showed off? Well, those are kind of awkward and ratchet, right? No one had legs. And goggles and glasses, simply they don't have the processing power or connectivity to make anything look good. Again, yet, now things will evolve and change. The quality and realism will improve quickly. Technologies accelerating. New products are going to launch. Some will change the world. Most won't. For example, have you tried to buy a 3D TV lately or a 3D PlayStation lately? Have you seen a drone delivery in your neighborhood or a flying car? What happened to hoverboards? Are you really ready to trust an algorithm to drive your family through a crowded city with an unpredictable bunch of other people driving around who don't have AI in their vehicles? You know what I mean? So some things will hit, some will miss. Now, in a more virtual world, things like Epic's Unreal Engine are giving away tools to virtually anyone to create three-dimensional, real-looking objects from real-world photos or video. I have actually tried it. It's pretty darn cool. I made an avatar myself, which actually resembles me, so to speak, but they're getting better and more realistic every day. All right, so the question is, we're going to end up buying things and doing things in this metaverse. So how are we going to track these shiny new digital assets in the multiverse or metaverse? keep calling it multiverse but that's where this blockchain comes in so you'll be able to convert real money into a virtual currency and do everything from buy land create buildings and businesses and maybe even get married through digital avatars in reality somebody actually bought a real home using uh using the blockchain already it's i, I don't understand how it works it's above my pay grade but apparently it is legally possible to do that. So what's a blockchain? I hear people asking over there. Well, Investopedia defined it the best I found. I'm looking for a whole bunch of, what's a definition? What's the authentic, real, accepted, real world definition of blockchain? Investopedia says blockchain is a distributed database that stores information electronically in a digital format, obviously. Blockchains are best named, known for their role in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin for maintaining a secure and decentralized record of transactions. Decentralized is important there. This supposedly guarantees the security of recorded data. Now, essentially, we said it's a database. Now, unlike a database, databases store data in tables, but a blockchain collects information together in groups known as, guess what? Blocks. Now, blocks have a certain capacity. When they're filled at capacity, then they're permanently closed and then linked to a previously filled block, forming a chain of data known as the blockchain. All the new information that follows that freshly added block is compiled into a newly formed block that will then be closed and added to the chain once it's filled. So this essentially creates an unchangeable timeline of data. Hopefully somebody's backing it up somewhere. So blockchains are set to become the irrefutable mechanism to store anything worth value in the metaverse. So at this point, you have multiple platforms that offer experiences in virtual reality, augmented reality, and extended reality. There isn't really a single portal that people can use to access the metaverse yet, but that's what Facebook or Meta is hoping to create. But for now and for the near future, we'll most likely use our computers and smartphones to on-ramp to whatever the metaverse is or will be. But that could change down the road as well. So parents and concerned laymen ask, is the metaverse safe? Well, it's as safe as the internet for now. It's not saying a lot because it basically is the internet. And we've already seen what rumors and fake news can do to elections and other things in the real world, so that. But here's the scary part. As fake things become more and more real and realistic, it's going to be more difficult to tell the difference between what is real and what is fake. Now, this could result in, this is the worst case scenario, as disinformation, bullying, libel, slander, and lawyers are already gearing up. They see this on the horizon. They're gearing up for that potential disaster. And of course, with greater tech comes the possibility of better surveillance. So everything you do in the metaverse can be tracked and recorded, including your appearance, your facial expressions, your eye movements, your voice, your language patterns and behavior, especially YouTubers. I'm a little worried. I'm not going to lie. So imagine that kind of data being used to create a virtual you who becomes, I don't know, a gangster, some kind of criminal and gets framed in the metaverse for some kind of unimaginable digital crime that we can't even imagine yet. Uh, digital privacy's people's heads are already exploding about that and rightfully so. So obviously 
our government and the authorities will need to figure out how to protect you, me, and everyone else from that sort of malfeasance because it's coming down the pike and they see it coming. They know it's coming. So look, the metaverse is essentially the new internet. It's better. It's more realistic. It's uh, something you can interact with and you actually will believe that you're interacting in the real world. That's kind of where it's headed. But we're still a ways away from the metaverse, whatever it becomes, becoming a dominant part of our lives where we can't ignore it. We're there with the internet now, but that took about 40 some years from its invention to something you can't ignore because a lot of banks are online. A lot of shopping's only done online. You can't, you have to pay your bills online and you can't really ignore it now. So it's going to take a little while for the metaverse to catch up and approach that level of, of realism and um, interaction with our life. Uh, we're probably talking five, 10 years, at least probably a little bit more. And there's also the possibility that the metaverse might stink and no one wants to use it at all. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's coming up down the line. It could be something else that replaces it. It's even cooler, better, or more safe. But right now, it's kind of up in the air. And who knows? Realistically, we may all already be in the metaverse. And maybe we don't even know it. <laughs>